if you ever get bored, just scroll on to YouTube and you will sometimes see biographics themed channels, pretty much focused on history. If you ever want to look in countries in Africa, you will see really a repeating theme that corrupt leaders like to steal elections. It's happened all the time. A guy can stay in power like 20 years, then change the rule and stay in power again until 20 years. And there's even some people that have died and still be on the ticket and still win for another four years. And a guy isn't even living. Yeah, that's Africa and that's many parts of third world countries. But we never think about that's gonna happen in America, right? Wrong. That happens in America too. Certain levels of corruption. Now, it's not as bad as what we see in the third world, but it does exist. Let's kind of go back to the Bring Chicago Home Referendum Initiative. Mr. Brandon Johnson, who is the mayor of Chicago, thought about putting out a new tax, another tax in Chicago. What was the tax supposed to solve? Homelessness. Well, how do you solve homelessness? Well, here's a good idea. Whenever you sell a house, well, what we'll do is we'll lower the taxes for those who are poor. But if the house is a million dollars or property or more, we're going to raise the property taxes. And that kind of stealing from the rich to give to the poor will solve homelessness. Give them a round of applause for that stupid idea. Because it comes with two drawbacks. Well, what kind of property is sold for usually over a million dollars? Commercial real estate. So then what happens is you make it harder for commercial real estate deals and brokers to make sales because taxes are too high. So now you're not really encouraging commercial real estate to happen because that's what occurred in Los Angeles. They tried that same stupid thing there and it pretty much destroyed the commercial real estate industry. But secondarily, if the taxes are gonna be high, if I'm an owner of a building, well, here's what I can do. Let me raise the person's rent. So people who don't really have the money to have a house and you got a rent, I'm gonna raise your rent because we gotta pay these people who are taxing us to give to people who are homeless. Guess what? Chicago shot it down. Two things happened and that's a low voter turnout. And then in this clip. We are now less than one day away from the Illinois primary election. And as we speak, voters are making their way to the polls to cast their early ballots. Casey Cronus is live with the voting super site in the loop with the latest. Hey, Casey. Well, Terrence and Sylvia, things have been steady here, but not nearly as busy as election officials would like to see. Any registered voter in Chicago, no matter what ward you live in, can come to the super site here in the loop to cast your ballot. And officials with the Chicago Election Commission are urging people to get out and vote because right now voter turnout here in Chicago is low compared to previous elections, down about 50 percent compared to this point leading up to the 2020 and 2016 primary. Those are the results of Mr. Brendan Johnson losing the election. And what's the reason why he lost it? it? Appears that voters have rejected the controversial referendum on the ballot. It would have given city council the green light to raise the real estate transfer tax on high end property transactions. Mayor Brandon Johnson and progressive supporters had hoped it would generate revenue that would help Chicago's unhoused population. The measure has been fiercely contested in court by a coalition of real estate and development groups, but passionate supporters last night said they will wait for every mail in ballot to be counted and they plan to keep fighting opponents maintain bring chicago home would raise well three reasons many black chicago voters or voters at all just didn't want to vote they stayed home they felt like it's a waste of their time and then also the referendum they wanted to see a cap on migrant spending that wasn't there that's what they were looking for they wanted to vote on something that made sense not on this stupid bring Chicago home tax. But wait a minute, we saw the numbers that were there. Then we get this. 
And right now the gap in the race for Cook County State's attorney is razor thin. Here's where it stands right now. Eileen O'Neill Burke is now leading Clayton Harris III by just under 4,800 votes. This weekend also saw the news of the Chicago Board of Elections adding more than 10,000 votes to the total ballot count. The result of what its director of public information said was a human error. CBS 2's Andrew Ramos is live in the newsroom with the latest. Well, Megan, that apparent human error is now opening the door to what could be anyone's race. The addition to these more than 10,000 ballots is injecting new energy in both the Burke and Harris campaigns, both who had poll watchers on site today as votes were counted. Now, as the spokesperson for the Chicago Board of Elections, Max Bever, put it, these additional ballots came into the mix after he realized he mistakenly left out some vote by mail ballots, issuing an apology about the flub this weekend, explaining that the ballots were under locking key and were postmarked and received by election day. After meeting with both the Burke and Harris campaigns and explaining the situation, all parties agree that ballot counting and ballot signature verification would continue Sunday. Oh yeah. Oops. 10,000 votes anonymously show up for the referendum. Now, the guy tried to take accountability, but no. I think that we all look at this as being suspicious. You are trying to steal the vote and the progressives really wanted this to pass. And even Brandon Johnson looked pretty pissed off when he said this the issue. So look, there are 68,000 people who are unhoused. That's the focus. One in four black children will experience homelessness in the city of Chicago throughout their education career. Very much committed. Yes. He's motivated to do that again, except for this time. They just gonna steal the goddamn boat because they can, right? And it's ridiculous, I know, but man, I never knew Chicago was this corrupt. I knew it was racist, but hey, I guess the alderman George Blake was right when he said this. It's something wrong here. It's something evil here. It's something corrupt here. What is it, Mr. Blake? All of these people here are Democrats. All of them are Democrats. Well, over in China, they got a one-party system. In Chicago, they do too. Yes, the most corrupt city in the United States. The most racist city in the United States. Chicago, the most corrupt city in America. Damn, is that how y'all do it in the shy? I mean, wow. I mean, people come out and vote, and you know, you have... 10 or 13,000 ballots that show up unannounced. And again, Chicago is a great city. It's the third biggest financial district in America, which has to be at least top 30 worldwide. You know, you got all the great educational facilities there. University of Chicago, there's Loyola Merrim out there. You got Northwestern somewhere around there. You know, you got all kinds of jobs, all kinds of institutions. But why can't they ever get it right when it's running these damn cities? Why does Chicago have it wrong all the time? And now y'all can't even count votes? Guys, I think you really need to see the writing on the wall. Now they're just trying to do anything to stay in power, right? And hey, like the legendary Alderman said, the Chinese have one, a one party system. Chicago does too, Democrat. And again, you get what you vote for, just like you get what you pay for. When you empower these people to do nothing for you, don't get mad when they literally do nothing for you. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, Shady Jackson, back at it again. with another episode here at Fair Use. I'm out.